Welcome to this video explaining how to rig your Ark Royal Miniatures 1 1200 scale ships. In every wargaming genre, there is a level of modelling which goes beyond functional. Undoubtedly, it enhances the appearance of the models, but adds little in practical terms, and sometimes could make the pieces a little bit more delicate or tricky to handle. Whether it be a greater level of painting and basing detail on figure miniatures, or aerials, weathering and decals on vehicles, it looks great, but does not fundamentally change the usage. That said, it usually makes the miniatures even more irresistible and can further hook the gamer into the period. The Age of Sail equivalent is rigging and rat lines on miniature sailing ships. It looks oh so complicated and disorientating to the eye. Most gamers who have never attempted to rig a ship model before find it difficult to get any sense of bearing. I mean, where do you start? Of course, even the most intricate rigging jobs on model scales at less than 1 300 are usually over simplistic representations which fool your eyes into believing that they are accurate. When an actual rigging plan is consulted, it is easy to see why it is almost impossible to reproduce on a model. It would also be wholly impractical in terms of die rolling, pushing around the tabletop and storage. It's simply not necessary for wargaming. I have rigged ships in 1 2400 and 1 1200 scale as these are my preferred gaming scales. These rigging configurations are representational and suggestive. They create the illusion of accuracy, but are simplistic. Remember that the rigging on a real ship is not all the same thickness. Some ropes and lines are thicker than others. Scale demands that a practical compromise is reached as trying to scale rope thicknesses would prove a law of diminishing return. All rigging and miniatures of this scale is far too thick, but if an attempt was made to model it to scale, it would be finer than gossamer and cobwebs. This video is about rigging Art Royal 1200 scale metal miniatures. The models have been designed to look good naked. No rigging, no rat lines. For modelers who wish to put in extra levels of detail, this is not a binary decision. Do none or do it all. There are levels of detail, each of which can add something visually, but which carry a longer time commitment and demand a slightly higher degree of modeling effort. To understand what you need to do, let's look at a couple of examples. Firstly, decoding three basic components of the rigging will help. Standing rigging is best described as large, fixed, strong lines, ropes or cables, which hold the masts in place and secure. It is permanent and often thicker than other rigging. It concentrates around the masts and usually runs in a vertical direction, often angled, but normally up and down. The next type is called running rigging. This controls the sails. It is often changed, but of course you can't do that in a model once it's built. Some running rigging also runs up and down, but much of it appears to be orientated on the horizontal plane between the yards, which are the spars from which the sails hang. The third group is what is often described as rigging, which should be more accurately called shrouds or stays and wrap lines. These are the lattice arrangements which are effectively a combination of vertical supports for the masts, crisscrossed by horizontal scramble nets for sailors to go aloft and make adjustments to the sail configuration. They appear to cluster from the ship's sides up the masts, getting less dense and thinner towards the top and are very wide at the hull end. By breaking down the apparently complex combination of these three into separate components, you can make a decision. Will I do none? or some, or all. This 12400 scale model has its rat lines and shrouds cast on. At this scale, it works, but for larger scales, the complications of casting and the unsightly inner edges of such a design would be very off-putting and ugly. A model in this scale will look fine without any additional rigging, although I have used a representation of standing rigging to enhance it, and that works in creating the illusion of a fully rigged ship in this tiny scale. For 1 1200 scale models, an easy choice is to paint the model, fix in the masts and base it without any rigging. It can look fantastic, as this example illustrates. Art Royal Miniatures produce rat line and shroud arrangements for almost every ship in the range. These are made from etched brass sheeting and are as accurate as we could make them. Notice the distance between the rat lines. 
still not exactly to scale, as such a design would produce a solid brass slice without any daylight between the rat lines and stays, but this is as realistic as we could make it when compared to some other products available in this scale. If you choose to include a representation of rigging, the simplest option is to attach some of the brass rat lines and shrouds. Here are a few simple tips for rat lines. 1. Paint them in a basic form before attaching them to the painted model. Glue drips and stains are easily painted over after attaching and some final detail can be added easily if you wish, such as dotting in the dead eyes, which are the tackle blocks used to tighten or loosen the lines. 2. You don't have to put all of the rat lines and shrouds in. We supply them, but I often leave off some of the smaller assemblies running from the main top to the upper parts of the masts. Frequently, I omit the mizzen length of the upper assembly as I cover that area in standing and running rigging. 3. The rat line shroud assemblies can be cut or snipped using small cutters or even scissors. They are made with some extra length because we cannot be sure how deeply you will embed the masts into the hull or at what angle you may rake the masts. Don't be afraid to cut these brass pieces. Through experimentation and trial, I've learned lots of little ways to fool the eye. Behind the curtain, not everything is exactly as it seems. In this scale, small practical bodges will never be noticed. It's a forgiving scale to work in. 4. The straight edges at the top of each piece can be snipped away wholly or partly. The soft brass can be nipped into a bunch or cluster to create a taper at the main top end. You can even snip off entire vertical strips of one or more shrouds if you want to fit the section that way. 5. Sails are sculpted billowing. Metal castings occasionally have little burrs on them which you will not notice till long after you've painted or fitted them. These can sometimes inhibit the smooth fitting of rat lines. Test fit your rat lines before gluing them. If there is a little burr, you may scrape it away with a scalpel and repaint, or you could clip a little section out of the rat line above the dead eye section. This cut will be hidden by the billowing of the sail. 6. The section that may cause a little frustration is that on the starboard quarter of some models. The mizzen lateen sail bulges out a bit to create the attractive effect of the wind catching in the sail. I usually shape the rat line over the billowing sail. I sometimes gently twist the top section before clipping between two rat lines and taking the remaining vertical shrouds and pinching them together with snips or with my fingers. This will attach to the side or just below the mizzen top platform. 7. Try and ensure when cutting your sections of rat lines from the sprue that you retain the oblong section below the dead eyes. This is easily glued to the corresponding channel on the hull side. These channel sections are well defined and easy to key onto. 8. When gluing rat lines, hold them mid-length using tweezers and turn the ship on its side so that gravity is assisting the placement of the oblong section on the rat line to the channel on the hull side. Try and make them as straight as possible. 9. If you are going to rig the ship with some standing or running rigging, fit the rat lines last, not first. 10. I usually work from stern to stem, fitting in the order standing rigging, then rat lines, then running rigging. The last type is usually placed on the outside of both the standing rigging and the rat lines. If you want to fit standing rigging, you could use fine cotton thread. I don't use this for a variety of reasons. I don't like the loose hairs which can sometimes be seen. I also dislike the slackness which sometimes appears after fitting which can detract from the overall appearance of the ship. I get round this by using cut lengths of plastic fibre. This comes from the bristles of old brushes. I paint the standing rigging lengths matte black. To differentiate the running rigging, I paint this first in khaki and then dot it with a light buff to create the illusion of a rope. Of course, it's much too thick, but your eyes will be kind to you and help with the suspension of disbelief. You don't have to put every major section of standing rigging in. I try and place in one, the main stays, two, the back stays, 3. Lines from masts to spars and 4. The assemblies around the bowsprit. Start from the stern of your model. Attach lines from the ends of the mizzen top yard 
to the tip of the mizzen yard. I also put a line from the mizzen mast to the mizzen yard tip. You will be able to add at least one backstay from the top of the mizzen to the hull side on the larboard side of your ship. On some models, you can add the starboard side backstay too. Having completed this standing rigging, it would be time to put on the ratlines to the mizzen. Having done that, move to the stays running from near the top of the mizzen to the fighting top of the main mast and then from the mizzen top to the base of the main mast. I often glue this one in before actually gluing the main mast in place. Follow this process from stern to bow. If you choose to use lines from the masts to the spars which I do, complete them before gluing on the mast and also put the rat lines for the upper part of the mast from the fighting top to the tagallant before fixing the mast in place. This will make things much easier. Don't use too much glue as sometimes this can warp the fibre which is strong but also light. And so to paraphrase Randall P. McMurphy, a little dab will do ya. A final few tips on using the fibre lengths. Make sure your tweezers have a good grip because this stuff is springy and you'll lose many lengths on the floor so just get used to it. It's easy to cut to the right length and you'll get your eye in after a while. Only use a tiny dab of super glue on each end and you can paint in and matte varnish over this afterwards, no problem. I often get asked about the curved sections of running rigging. This stuff is flexible. Cut it slightly long and tack it to the end of the yard. Use your tweezers to tease the other end in place and the sag will be created naturally. So there you have it. Get aloft and get rigging. If you found this video useful, please like it and subscribe to the League of Augsburg channel. Till the next time.